for champions. You look to CBS Sports. This is CBS. Did you know Pontiac outsells every import? I had no idea. Did you know Grand Am's base sticker price is over $1,000 less than Honda Accord? I had no idea. You can add to your Grand Am value with 2.9% financing or $1,000 cash back. That's the idea. Do you know why Pontiac outsells Honda and Nissan and Toyota? I've got an idea. See Galling, Lake Orion, La Fontaine, Highland, Park, Richmond, or Jim Cosley, Mount Clemens. BF Goodrich TA tires perform like great athletic shoes. Grab. Dig. Because BF Goodrich TA tires are low and wide. BF Goodrich TA tires. Think of them as athletic shoes for your car. Yeah. This is what great ice-cold draft beer used to look like. This is what it looks like today. Cold filtered, never heat pasteurized, Miller Genuine Draft. Our exclusive cold filtered brewing method produces a smooth, real draft taste that blows ordinary beers away. So tap into the cold, cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. A great team, great season. Congratulations, Pistons. Congratulations, Pistons, on a job well done. Congratulations, Pistons, on a great season. Congratulations, Pistons. Congratulations, Pistons, on a great year. The Pistons, CBS Sports and TV2. What a team, what a season. Good evening, I'm Joe Glover. And I'm Dana Eubanks. Our top story tonight, it's a sweep. The Detroit Pistons are world champions. After coming to Detroit in 1957 from Fort Wayne, Indiana, they are now the champions of the National Basketball Association, their first ever national title. As you saw just before this newscast, the Pistons dethroned the Los Angeles Lakers in a heart-stopping game that thrilled fans from coast to coast. It was a victory a year in the making. During the championship finals last year, the two teams were pitted against each other, and with the Pistons just one win short of grasping the title, the Lakers snatched it from them. But that was then, and this is now. And right now, the team is celebrating at the Forum. And like the Forum, the Palace in Auburn Hills. Here you see a live picture, and fans are rocking there, ecstatic over the Pistons' blockbuster win tonight. Those fans watched the action on giant Palace Vision, perhaps the next best thing to being at the Forum. It was a typical Pistons game, lots of uh, muscle, very physical game, lots of defense. The Pistons, in early foul trouble, had to battle back from a 16-point deficit. Typical of tonight's action, early in the fourth quarter, James Edwards hits a jump shot to give the Pistons an 84-82 lead. And Isaiah Thomas' breakaway layup late in the quarter gives the Pistons a 93-87 lead, and they led the rest of the way in this game. Now, as the Pistons battled their way to the NBA championship, TV2's Eli Zarrett was courtside at the Forum, watching the Pistons make it to the end of the glory road. Eli is standing by right now outside the Pistons' locker room, where the players are uh, finally able to celebrate tonight. Also, the coach, Eli. That's right. The coach has celebrated a little bit tonight. Uh, I wonder how much clothing you've destroyed tonight with cheap champagne. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, fortunately, on a blue suit, it doesn't look all that bad. You know, no one can look bad in a blue suit, even with even soaking wet with champagne. But it's the best shampoo I've had in a long, long time. <laughs> and your smile, and finally, even when the final buzzer went off, I, I saw a hesitation. Did it go through your mind? Yes, finally, now I can relax. I can smile. Yeah, yeah, but it really probably hasn't set in. It started to set in a little bit this afternoon that the possibility was there. And I felt we were going to win the series, but I didn't know exactly when. And then when the way they came out in this game, the intensity and the, you know, the flair that they had worthy on fire, and we get down 15. But our club has been able to weather those kind of storms all year, and we keep talking about playing 48 minutes and getting to the last quarter. And we kept, you know, maneuvering around and uh, got a group in it and played pretty good defense, got us back in the game, got us to five and a half, even missing 11 free throws, which is unusual for us, and being out-rebounded 25 to 13. So we came back, we got started well in the third quarter, then it kind of snowballed from there. You've always been able to turn the stats around. You were down even 16 against the Bulls in the opener, came back. The team that you and Jack McCloskey have built, the players, the swarming, the uh, defense, just, just speak, if you would, about about this team and, and it's really one of uh, one of the unique teams in NBA history yeah I think it is uh, you know so many clubs are offensive minded uh, I didn't think and I told our guys again at half I must have said it 3,000 times we're not gonna win this game offensively we're not gonna beat people offensively we're, we're not put together like that we're gonna have to do it defensively and it's the way we've done it all year and uh, even with Rodman getting hurt not being able to play minutes and he's one of our key defensive players a lot of people stepped up Mahorn had his biggest game of the year by far James Edwards got very aggressive offensively, but you're right. It's unique to do it on the defensive end in the NBA today. It's not fashionable. We'll talk about your players a little bit more, but obviously a guy like Chuck Daly, although people don't hear of him necessarily until he gets to this position, 30 years or so in the business, Chuck, I know it hasn't hit you yet, but it's been a long road for you, and, and, and when it does sink in, what's it going to mean? Well, it's, it's an accomplishment that, you know, basically no one can take it away from you once you have it. And, uh, you know, all the years, uh, I remember when I first came to Detroit, we were in the playoffs and every year, and, but I would go to Boston and watch the finals and uh, see the finals on TV, and I said, boy, it would be unbelievable to get there. But once you work as hard as we do to get there, there's something that kind of allows you to mellow it out and not get so exuberant. Um, it's great for the players. I, you know, I'm much, much older than that. It's, it's fantastic. They've, they've worked so hard. I've been very, very demanding this year, almost maniacal in the playoffs, and they know it. Not many smiles and not many days off, but I think they understand what we've been trying to do. Starting tomorrow morning, or maybe we can even start right now, they're going to say, what are the chances? This is the kind of team, young, balanced, veterans, youth, it plays great defense. It seems like the kind of team that can set some kind of legacy like the Lakers have. I know I know, one championship is great, but this does have a chance to become a team, perhaps. Do you feel that the Lakers have become? Well, I don't know if there'll ever be a, a, quite a dynasty like they've had in the years. I don't think that'll happen again. I think we have a chance to come back to this position again here next year. But it'll take uh, unusual attitudes. You know what? You don't know what's going to happen during the year. Obviously, there are always injuries and attitudes and those kind of things. But I think the, the group is here that can come back because we know how to do it. We know what it takes to do it. We know the amount of work. We know the amount of tolerance for each other. Uh, and that's a key word. When you spend 18 out of the last 21 months together, you've got to have a great deal of tolerance for each other and accept some things from each other that maybe you're not happy about if you were individual. Spent a lot of time together, but did you, after tonight, have a chance in all this mayhem to say something to them? If you had a message to them to sum it all up and, and, and put it, you know, would you? No, I, I really didn't have an opportunity, and uh, I, I don't know how meaningful it will be right now. And I've got to think about it. Uh, I like to choose my time, choose my words. There's a long time to think about things, and I think it's time for them to enjoy what they've worked so hard to get. Certainly have, and you have too. All right, Chuck Daly, congratulations, and too bad this one's got to go down the drain, yeah, but congratulations. Well, it's worth it. Okay, Thank you. Chuck Daly, the Piston coach. All right, at the Palace tonight, more people, believe it or not, than we're here at the L.A. Forum. I believe a full house standing by at the Palace uh, with perhaps 21,000 people that are still partying. Mike Redford. Mike, how'd it go there tonight? Well, Eli, it had been absolute bedlam here. They were dancing in their seats. 21,000 fans, as you said, a sellout. This has been a happening. More fans, as you said, here than in the forum tonight. And quite frankly, if you didn't know any better, the game seemed like it was played here, not in L.A. Piston ball boy John Pavitt created the initial excitement. 
touting the bad boy banner, something he's done before every playoff game. But this crowd, he said, was different. It felt great tonight because, I mean, we really, the fans are coming out to show them the spirit. I mean, these are the real fans you get down here at these games. The noise level here was deafening, not just once in a while, but all game long. And the fans can tell you why it's not like this for Piston games during the regular season. I think it's because we're so close to winning the championship and we're going to sweep them today. That's probably all it is. For Palace workers, it was business as usual. They were out in force. We look at this event as being a, a live game uh, situation. Uh, we are staffed with a full complement of police and crowd control and our ticket takers and hosts to accommodate uh, what we expect to have about a 20,000 uh, capacity crowd. They even lowered the baskets at halftime to ensure overzealous fans would not tear them down in the event of a Piston victory. Now, the fans here could have stayed home, of course, and watched the game in peace on their own TV. No way! This is great! This is the best atmosphere in the world! No place better than Motown right now! This is it! This is great! This is great! Undoubtedly, these fans will want to welcome the Pistons home when they get back. And Eyewitness News will be the first one to tell you when that'll happen. Joining me live right now is Don Bagnell. He's with the Pistons organization. Tell me what's planned when the boys get home. Thursday afternoon, starting at 12 noon, we're going to have a parade starting at Grand Circus Park, traveling up Woodward. It's going to end up at Woodward and Liner where they're going to have a little ceremony. The players are going to talk. Uh, and then that afternoon at 4 o'clock, there's going to be a rally here at the Palace uh, starting at 4 o'clock. Okay, and tonight is not the last time you'll be able to get a bad boy t-shirt either. Something else special is planned tomorrow, right? Starting tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock in the morning here on the Palace lot, we're going to be selling all of the world championship paraphernalia. We're going to have a tent set up outside the West Gate. Everything you can think of that has Detroit Pistons, NBA world champions is, is going to be out there. 7 in the morning till 9 at night. Okay, you've been cheering a little bit too. You've been with the organization seven years. Pretty big moment for you as well, right? It's incredible. All the people that we're waiting to see after we're done here. We're going to do it again. Okay, that's the story inside the palace. Let's go outside now to Scott Lewis, who has the story outside the palace. Scott? Well, Mike, I'm live right now outside the west entrance to the palace, and as you can see behind me, the celebration is going full tilt here. Oakland County Sheriff's deputies and Auburn Hills Police moved in just a couple of minutes ago to clear some fans out from around our live truck. The crowd was getting just a little bit too big and just a little bit too exuberant but uh, there hasn't been any serious trouble out here so far. This is how it looked just moments after the final buzzer here at the West Entrance. A lot of fans came streaming out, headed straight for their cars, trying to beat the expected traffic jams, but others stayed around, thrusting their fingers and their fists into